Portugal is one of the most popular expat destinations for North American retirees, and for good reason. In this video, we're going to talk about five of the best places, possible options you might want to live in Portugal, and two that I'd recommend you avoid. Hi, I'm Terry Coles, a frequent contributor to International Living, and today I'm coming to you from my home in Tavira, Portugal. Portugal is one of the most popular expat destinations for North American retirees, and for good reason. The visa process is easy. We boast over 300 days of sunshine a year, depending on where you settle in the country. There's a large expat network, excellent health care in both the public and the private system, Beautiful scenery, medieval villages, gorgeous coastline. And English is widely spoken, depending on where you live, like I said. But where is the best place to live in Portugal? Well, that really depends on what you prefer. Do you like big city living and want to live in the heart of Lisbon with yellow trams buzzing by and lots of noise and traffic? But it also has museums, nightlife, and gastronomy. Or do you want to wake up in a small village where the church bells are chiming and you hear the cackle of your neighbor's hen in the next yard? Portugal has something for most everyone. And in this video, we're going to talk about five of the best places, possible options you might want to live in Portugal, and two that I'd recommend you avoid. Now let's have a look at five places to live in Portugal and two places that you might wish to avoid. Now, I knew when I wrote this article that I, there would be people out there not happy about the choices that I said to avoid, but I'm going to explain why. Lisbon, the vibrant capital of Portugal, is loved by so many people. It's not a cheap place to live. It is rather expensive, but if big city living is your choice, then that might be for you. It has a lot to it. It's impressive. It has the castles, the yellow cable cars that climb the narrow streets. There's over 60 museums, there's an English-speaking theater, friendly family beaches, very cuisine, and plenty of expats from around the world to hang out with. Lisbon combines old-world charm with all the modern conveniences needed to feel at home with some of the best weather in Europe. You'll never be bored living in Lisbon and the nearby beaches of Cascais, a fairy tale village of Sintra, along with an international airport close by for easy access to the rest of the world. Since it's a big city, Lisbon has some of the best hospitals in the country, and often people have to go there or Coimbra or some of the other big cities to find what they want. The next place we're going to talk about is Porto in the north. Portugal, Portugal's second city is considered Porto. It's about three hours north of, Porto, of Lisbon. It's situated on the Douro River, and this is the beautiful port wine-making region of the country. It's rich in culture and history, and this is another part of Portugal where English is commonly spoken. From great shopping along the Rua Catarina to local cuisine, excellent health care, a large expat community, and a cooler climate, this could be the perfect place to call home. Plus, Porto has one of the country's three international airports, making it easy for friends and family back home to come visit. That's a nice thing about Portugal. There's an airport up in the north in Porto. There's one in Lisbon in the center, and there's one in the Algarve. When people ask me about a scouting trip, I say, if you have time, fly into one and fly out of the other, and there's plenty to see along the way. Rent a car and explore every nook and cranny of the country. The next place I want to talk about is not just one city, but it's an area called the Silver Coast. This is where we lived for our first two years here um, in the city of Caldas de Grenha. One hour north of Lisbon is the mid-sized city of Caldas de Grenha, which was built around a thermal hospital, one of the oldest in the world. The lively old town features a daily fruit and vegetable market, Nearby, there's a fish market and there's a weekly flea market just up the hill that sells just about everything. This is not a touristy market. It's where the locals go to find all the best bargains. It's a compact city with plenty of shopping from large grocery stores. It has a modern multi-level shopping center, a variety of cuisine, a handful of museums, 
a beautiful park where locals and expats go to hang out, enjoy the walking trails, grab a bite to eat at the restaurant, or paddle a boat across the man-made little lake. Kaldisha, as it's commonly called, is a large expat community, along with a public and private hospital, plus clinics for your health care needs. The nearby beaches of Foz do Aurelio and Nadadoro provide a welcome break on a hot summer day. The lagoon of Foz offers a safe place for those of all ages to enjoy tranquil waters or relax with friends at a waterfront cafe. Summer temperatures here are more spring-like, while winters are cold and rainy. Another place we're going to talk about is Lagos, and that's the way it's pronounced. It's not the way it's written. A few hours south of Lisbon is the Algarve region, with some of the warmest weather in the country, and actually some of the best weather in all of Europe. The town of Lagos has retained much of its charm, with its tile plaza in the old town and remnants of a fort perched along the waterfront. The coastline offers spectacular vistas of grottos, rock formations, and caves that can be explored by hiring a boat. There's no need to stress about learning Portuguese in Lagos because British holidaymakers have long visited the Algarve, so English is widely spoken by most everyone. We currently live in Tavira, and it's really almost a detriment because all of the locals want to speak English to you, and they all say, no, you don't need to learn Portuguese. But that's not to say we have not been in situations when our Portuguese was not good enough and we did have problems. So back to Lagos, summers here are hot and dry, where the winters are mild with some rain. Local shops and restaurants dot the old town, while larger grocery stores can be found nearby. Excellent health care is never far away with plenty of expats, and you'll never be lonely. Next, let's talk about Tavira which is on the opposite end of the Algarve, near the Spanish border. This is where we currently live. This is our third location in Portugal because we're renting. It makes it easy to move around if we're not happy. But we're loving Tavira, so I think we're here to stay. Nice thing about Tavira is we can hop over the Spanish border in about 20 minutes with our car. We have the best of both worlds. So another popular Algarve hotspot is Tavira, located close to the Spanish border. Tavira has retained much of its old town, with whitewashed houses decorated with colorful Portuguese tile called azulejos. A handful of restaurants line the cobbled lanes along the grocery, along with grocery stores. Life in Tavira is as slow as the Galau River that runs through it. Stroll along the old Roman bridge to admire the village or relax on a nearby sun-drenched beach. Tavira tends to get a few less tourists because the beaches are only accessed by a short ferry ride to Tavira Island, so the tourists are more out of town than in. Tavira has many expats from North America and Europe who have long called Tavira home. It makes it easy to fit in and get by speaking only English. Like the rest of the Algarve, here you'll find some of the best weather in the country and all of Europe. Local shops tend to cater to a British population, but Americans need only drive a few hours into Seville, Spain to stock up on American goods at a Costco warehouse, similar to what you're used to in the U.S. Okay, now let's have a look at a few places where settling in as an expat may not be so easy and perhaps should be avoided. Now, keep in mind that Portugal is one of the safest countries in the entire world. So there's absolutely no place here that is not safe to live. But I had to pick two places, so I came up with these two. The first one is Monsanto. Now, this is one of the most picturesque places in the country, and I loved visiting there. Uh, It's one of Portugal's famous schist villages. And schist is a type of flat rock that older homes are made of, and there's many of these schist villages throughout the country. Monsanto is one of the famous ones. But there's nothing there as far as hospital, grocery stores, or expats, so it's a place you just want to go visit and not live, and that's why I put it in here. So uh, Monsanto is considered by many to be the most Portuguese village in the country. It's a quaint little village with that can delight the senses but it's not a place I'd recommend living. Granite homes are squeezed in, on, and around giant boulders 
that look like they fell from the sky. It almost looks like a meteor dropped out of the sky on top of these houses. It's so cute to look at, and I can only imagine what they must look like on the inside, but not a place you'd want to live. The steep, rustic lanes are wide enough only for a donkey to climb, and it goes up 400 feet to the pinnacle of the village where there's the remains of a castle and a great overlook of the area. There's a few local shops inside the cave-like structures where we heard no English spoken. And at times it felt like time had stopped and we had stepped back into another era. While locals in Monsanto are used to seeing tourists, I doubt there's any expats living among them, and I doubt very much that any of the locals there speak English. The other place I suggested might not be great for every expat is the Alentejo, which is not a city or a town. It's an actual region in Portugal. Now I say this because the Alentejo is very rural. There's really not much there. The city of Évora is very historic and receives a lot of tourists, but other than that, the Alentejo in itself is farmland. The Alentejo is the, is the area in southern Portugal. It's actually the largest region in the country with vast plains that extend as far as the eye can see. Extreme temperatures of the north in the Alentejo, with summer highs reaching well over 100 Fahrenheit, and winters bring freezing, bone-chilling rains. This vast region of Portugal makes up 30% of all of Portugal, but its rural countryside is so sparsely populated that it only has 5% of the population there. The Alentejo is home to walled cities, forts, a few sleepy villages and cities like Beja and Évora. This is the heartland of Portugal. Few expats call the Alentejo home, although there are some there. I have seen them mention it on the Facebook groups. So in order to integrate and live here, you would re this would be full immersion into a Portuguese lifestyle, and you'd really have to have a good understanding of the Portuguese language. For a holiday, the Alentejo is the ideal spot to escape the tourist crowds, step back in time, and experience the rich culture. However, the vastness of this region would make it challenging for expats to meet, get adequate health care, or find the necessities required for everyday life. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment below letting us know what you think.